here is Mr. Alex Ross, whose work has won numerous awards throughout the world and whose paintings hang in many of our foremost museums and galleries. Here in his studio, Mr. Ross will tell us about his philosophy and approach to art as he demonstrates some of the techniques he uses in the watercolor medium. My work has changed greatly over the years. I've heard it from many people, and uh, one of the, uh, the things that I've become quite enamored of in recent years is watercolor. I'm known as one of the big brush users. Uh, I like big brushes. I think they're great for putting down a statement quickly, and uh, uh, you get a chance to work broad and quickly, and uh, these days I, I feel like I have to work quickly. I've got a lot of things to say, and this is the quickest way for me to say it. One of my favorite aids is uh, a little hair blower that I keep handy. It just adds it to my uh, own particular technique. I do occasional portraits, which uh, require a little more attention to detail. Uh, I don't do as many of them as I used to. Um, I tried even in those days to, to make my things uh, as full of uh, the abstract, uh, give it a great deal of abstract design as much as possible. People often ask me, uh, how do you begin a painting? Well, you know, this is one of the most difficult things for an artist to answer. I find that uh, looking through art books gives me a great deal of inspiration. I particularly love Matisse. I think he's a great colorist. Uh, of course, I'm particularly interested in color and uh, I begin often by looking into the works of some of our more famous painters and picking up a favorite uh, color scheme. And uh, from that get some inspiration to begin a painting of my own. Uh, this is not an easy thing to do all the time, to find inspiration for your work. But what I do is, is borrow inspiration from the color. Blocking off a, uh, a picture to work for composition is important. And the, and the color sketches are tremendously important. I know pretty well what I'm going to do uh, before I uh, start my painting. One of the uh, things that I find helpful to me in, in working is not to uh, overload my palette with paint. And by that I mean I don't have a formal color arrangement. I'm not particularly interested in, in careful blending. I, I find that uh, rather dull. I've been all through that. And uh, I'm more interested in the powerful uh, statement. I find that uh, isolating color and letting it stand out by itself means more to me than technical blending and technical tricks. My uh, palette is uh, rather undisciplined at times, I might say. If it just uh, happens that I want a, a big dab of ultramarine on my uh, palette, I, I quickly put it down and try to eliminate all disturbing color from the area. I think that I work rather quickly, and I think it's good. Uh, putting uh, your watercolor statements down fast is the proper way to do it. And that's the real beauty of watercolor, to get the real character of it to work for you. I find it uh, important when I'm doing a picture to occasionally introduce a very bright spot of color. This appeals to me. I like to use color as intelligently as, uh, as I know how. I think color is uh, so, so beautiful it has to be treated almost like a symphony. But it must be a symphony of, uh, of harmony. Chaotic color is uh, extremely disturbing to me, and I, I try to watch that carefully, that this doesn't happen. I also find it uh, kind of important to uh, uh, keep changing water, and uh, I usually keep two or three clean palettes uh, nearby, so that in case I want to quickly change color, I can uh, use it to the best advantage, so that it doesn't become involved with uh, other colors. Of course, when I'm mixing colors, uh, like a blue and a yellow or a blue and a red, naturally we, we have to have more than the one color on there. Smaller brushes, of course, are also necessary in certain areas, and, but uh, I find most of the time that I'm working with a big brush. There's a great um, satisfaction in, in uh, 
and seeing your color come to the point where it's just right very quickly without uh, mixing too long as in oil painting uh, in a very short space of time you have arrived at your exact uh, intensity of color I believe in painting watercolor with with a great deal of vitality I uh, my shapes have to be forceful and uh, I have to find that in my work uh, and uh, I keep searching for it and uh, it's tremendously important to me composition uh, of uh, abstract is somewhat difficult to explain it's a, a sense a feeling you have for or the dramatic uh, for the play of uh, one strong uh, area against another but of course I try to emphasize the abstract qualities of the picture. But I work very high key uh, in most areas, um, uh, light values. Uh, I still want my wallop of color in there. I'm not interested in, uh, anymore in, in precise drawing. I think that's uh, incidental. That I'm trying to make color really dramatic by giving it uh, a stage in which to work, see? And I feel the stage is better if it's uh, light instead of dark see maybe that's what I'm trying to do I get a lot of inspiration from old photographs this is a very easy way I would say to to do a, a painting by maybe taking an obvious subject and try to make it maybe unobvious by eliminating the obvious or at least de-emphasizing the obvious and uh, placing great emphasis on is uh, uh, shadows sometimes or, or reflections even you know and uh, to me this uh, kind of uh, does something that uh, takes it away from the ordinary we're so used to seeing objects that are uh, uh, very familiar to us and uh, uh, one way to make your painting kind of stand out is is to uh, uh, introduce this idea of de-emphasizing the important I spend a great deal of time on preliminary work doing pencils, first of all, and uh, when I'm satisfied with my general composition in line, I begin to uh, follow that up by introducing areas of mass, uh, after which, uh, uh, when I'm satisfied with that, I make some color sketches of the whole composition. They, again, are quite rough, uh, very little detail in them, but enough to give me a, a general idea as to uh, what I want to see in my finished painting. Now, color sketches are very important to me. Well, after making uh, one color sketch, and then another, and then another, uh, it becomes increasingly difficult to uh, make your final selection. But the reason for all these uh, color sketches is to uh, be constantly searching for something that, that's new, hasn't been done before, and uh, uh, is pleasing to your eye, to your color sense. Then I draw on my finished surface very lightly. I don't like the pencil or drawing implement to interfere too strong work. In fact, I put it on just light enough to be able to see it. And uh, from that point on, it, it, it just fades into the background with my color over it. Uh, one of the important things about watercolor painting is, is predetermining your actions before. You don't have to worry too much about that in oil painting, but in watercolor, you really do. You have to think it out. Acrylic paints, unlike uh, traditional watercolor paints, uh, have qualities about them that are very interesting, and uh, for most of us, they uh, offer uh, very distinct advantages. Acrylic paint is tremendously exciting to work with. Uh, there's uh, qualities about acrylics that uh, traditional watercolor paint does not have, such as you could place a very bright color of deep value. You could start a painting with that and I often do this but uh, the point is that you can get some of your very strong passages in first rather than the way I work when I'm working in traditional watercolor where you're likely to paint on a heavy passage and then if you were to go over it with water it would disturb it but acrylics have dry almost immediately and uh, this is the the great advantage I'm talking about the reason I uh, sometimes draw with my brush instead of uh, painting you might say I'll begin to draw small areas with acrylic and when that dries I have that the outline of this pr particular passage nailed down and that allows me then uh, 
to sweep large washes without disturbing this acrylic which has dried. I don't always use large brushes. I occasionally use a small brush. And uh, there's reasons for this too. But as I said before, uh, that's not as important as getting your large areas in quickly and uh, with purpose, making a strong statement. I like to work uh, broad and freely. I feel little need to uh, be preoccupied with the blending of color. I think that most of my, the excitement I'm after comes in, in bold statements that uh, uh, have little to do with pretty blending. I like to use uh, the corner of a brush sometimes because uh, I can quickly, from that corner, go into a, a large slice, you know, I can just put down a huge stroke. Uh, and this is important uh, sometimes, so the very uh, intensity with which you paint sometimes uh, almost demands uh, uh, this kind of a, an application. Ordinarily, I find it much more advantageous to get down as quickly as possible a feeling of the picture, and that means I work maybe all over it. I, I rarely just do one small bit and, and try to finish that, that off. In fact, I don't even recall ever having done it that way. Uh, it's important to me to, to try to capture the dramatic qualities of the picture as quickly as possible. And, of course, this is one of the beautiful things about watercolor. You can do it that way. I like to work my color cleanly as possible. I keep playing with the uh, darks against whites, and uh, I study my work from time to time, and I don't think any artist uh, feels that he can uh, completely uh, tackle every uh, part of his painting with complete assurance uh, at every moment. Uh, he's, he has to stop and think about it. I find that a hard surface is uh, difficult to work on with watercolor because it won't dry immediately. It doesn't have that absorbent surface that, uh, say, paper does. But uh, I make up for that. I bring out my trusty little uh, hair dryer and uh, go to work on it. Generally, when I'm beginning a painting these days, I, I like to feel that um, what I'm doing is not the obvious. In fact, I rather like to de-emphasize the obvious and uh, emphasize the, the lesser important uh, details. I, I think in this way, I defeat the expectation that everyone has of, of seeing a very familiar object dramatized and made rather ordinary by this treatment. I feel that what I'm searching for in my work is a, a kind of a, uh, a poetic uh, lyricism, you might say, where uh, I operate somewhere between uh, a dreamlike feeling and reality, uh, somewhere between uh, a realism and abstraction. A clean palette is um, really quite important. I feel that uh, acrylics especially uh, do a pretty messy job on your palette, and uh, if you don't keep it clean, the little um, particles of paint dry and get in your brush and, uh, and more or less foul up your uh, washes. So you really have to keep uh, a very clean palette using uh, acrylics. A knife is important uh, for mixing. I often use that. And, uh, and of course, my big brushes are of prime importance to me. I, I find that uh, when I'm putting in a big, juicy wash, I just uh, have to have a big brush. And it would uh, inhibit me to uh, use anything uh, as small as, a, say, a number seven brush, a half-inch brush or something. Using large brushes would have scared me at one time. Now I really enjoy them. I feel that uh, a good-sized paintbrush is uh, absolutely essential to doing a, a strong watercolor. The uh, resist surface is marvelous for accidental effects. Knowing when to uh, stop is uh, one of the, uh, the important things about using the resist surface. You can uh, put in a large wash uh, and uh, the resulting effect is uh, always interesting. It's completely different than if you're using paper. When I'm painting, I, I kind of 
keep generally trying to think in an abstract manner. In spite of the fact that my subject matter is representational, I love the feeling that uh, there's abstract forces at work. And uh, I lean very strongly in that direction. Generally speaking, I don't recommend going over a watercolor. But in this case, it's almost necessary to occasionally uh, repeat a stroke. But there's no question about it. You get some marvelous watercolor effects on this particular board. I like to work on a low table and uh, on a flat surface. Then if there's anything uh, important, like I want to color or wash to run in a certain direction, I just tip my board, hold it up on an angle, and uh, let the water do the work. This is very important in a watercolor, to allow your liquid medium, that's what it really is, to, to do a lot of your work for you. I have no desire to make a, a, a minimal statement where very little is being said. I still like a lot of uh, content in my picture, but I'm very uh, uh, interested in keeping it uh, on the light side. While the paper's still wet, I often uh, introduce some perhaps delicate passages that, uh, that create interest and uh, variety to the picture. I like to take a common or ordinary subject, like boats or any familiar object, and try to uh, lose them in what you might call unimportant detail. Taking the uh, obvious and making it unobvious, you might say. Or take a uh, shadow, for instance, of an object and make the, uh, the object itself very unimportant and perhaps make the shadow far more important. In that way, you lead yourself into abstraction uh, where ordinarily you would find it difficult. Uh, it's not the easiest thing to, to try to abstractize, if that's a proper word to use there, uh, realistic objects but without becoming involved in in trickery. In this particular painting, I felt that it was important to choose uh, a couple of small areas and really wallop them with color, give them a powerful shot in the arm, so to speak. And um, this becomes important by isolating these uh, very bright uh, color spots. Um, if I were to use, for instance, uh, orange, as I'm doing here, uh, spread that color all over, uh, it would lose the dramatic effect that uh, I've attained by isolating it and keeping it in the company of uh, very strong, uh, deep values, uh, such as the uh, dark greens and dark blues around it. I generally reserve any small detail as uh, kind of the last stage of my painting, because once I see what the, the general overall dramatic effect is, uh, I feel that I've won my game, so to speak. So any additional small detail is, uh, is just icing on the cake. I like to work uh, when I'm feeling good, and that wouldn't matter whether it's 5 o'clock in the morning or uh, 6 o'clock at night. I don't like for me to work under artificial light, and I avoid that as much as possible. I find that, uh, having spent so many years at painting, that uh, I have less desire now to, to do the very obvious, realistic pieces. I, there's lots of people who are involved in realism, and, and I think there's another world beyond that. I think there's a, a world of, uh, well, you might almost call it mysticism. It's a dreamlike world where uh, we have our dreams, you know, and after all, they're important. And I think that uh, catching some of that is important to me, you know? And uh, there's more to it than that. You know, there, there is realism, and we have to realize there is. But there's also this dreamlike thing. There's this other world uh, that I think that we, we can uh, wonder about and think about and, and even try to paint. <laughs>